Good morning, Reverend Kim here from Nine Mile River and Riverview United Church in East Hans, Nova Scotia, joining you for our daily um, Facebook Live morning reflection, 10 a.m. every weekday morning. This week, um, lamenting together, sharing psalms and song and prayer. And so welcome to this space this morning. I'm grateful that you can be with me. Please say hi as you gather in. Um, so I know that you're here. It's really good to to know I'm not alone. I can see the numbers up the top, but it's really nice to see who's here. Good morning, Sherry and Marge and Eunice. Great to see you this morning. It's been a hard couple of days, and uh, I'm holding all of you in our community and our thoughts. I was so proud of the people of East Hans yesterday gathering to welcome home um, the injured constable from our Enfield detachment. Thank you if you were there. Good morning to Ruth. Good morning as everyone gathers in. So like I said, we'll be using, um, sharing psalms and this week in Psalms of Lament, Psalms of Communal Lament. Oftentimes, oh, oftentimes the psalms um, that we find in our own Bibles don't necessarily connect with us, but it's good to read the words. Um, they are about, oftentimes, about uh, David in exile. It's uh, King David in exile, and um, about the destruction of um, life as he knew it, and his people knew it, and that's sort of where we're living. We're living in a time where it feels like life as we've known it has been destroyed. And so it's good for us to gather and to sit in this space, to bear witness to our pain. Uh, we can't rush this. We can't push ourselves past it. The only way for us to survive this is to heal together. And healing takes time. It takes patience. It takes frustration and anger, and it takes a whole, whole, I almost swore, <laughs> a whole lot <laughs> of love. I know some of you would be like, whatever, it's a time for swearing. I think tomorrow the focus is going to be, it will share a song of lament, but uh, as I've mentioned a couple of times already, Ecclesiastes has been just... Um, going through my mind a lot. So I think tomorrow we'll share that. Good morning, Mom. So good morning to Jen and Ayla. Hi, Ayla. Sarah, nice to see you. Fern and Fred and Judy, good to see you all this morning. So the first psalm that I have for you is Psalm 80, and it is a psalm for the uh, restoration of Israel. It was a psalm to the leader from uh, King David. I am... Um, I then have a psalm for you from my friend, Matt Fillier. Reverend Matt Fillier is the minister at Bedford United Church. Um, he is the minister of my friend Lisa's sister, Jenny. And so they're close to this, and there's been a lot of pain. Um, and he held a Vesper service where he shared a psalm that he had written. And he's an incredible writer and orator and poet, and I'm going to share that with you uh, with his permission. And, um, and then we're going to sing a song. So, uh, let's get started. Oh, and I have a prayer. I have a prayer that I actually saw uh, Reverend Dr. Susan McAlpine Gillis had shared for those of us that pray. Um, it's a prayer from Sarah Jewell, and so that will be our prayer for today. All of these references, including links uh, to the Psalms, the prayers, and the reference to the song in Your Voices United, will be in the description of our video after this. So let's hear a psalm from David, Psalm 80, the prayer for Israel's restoration. Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, you who led Joseph like a flock, you who are enthroned upon the cherubim, shine forth before Ephraim and Benjamin and Manasseh. Stir up your might and come to save us. Restore us, O God. Let your face shine that we may be saved. 
O Lord God of hosts, how long will you be angry with your people's prayers? You have fed them with the bread of tears and given them tears to drink in full measure. You make us the scorn of our neighbors, our enemies laugh among themselves. Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your face shine that we may be saved. You brought a vine out of Egypt. You drove out the nations and planted it. You cleared the ground for it. You took deep root and filled the land. The mountains were covered with its shade, the mighty cedars with its branches. It sent out its branches to the sea and its shoots to the river. Why then have you broken down its walls so that all who pass along the way pluck its fruit? The boar from the forest ravages it, and all that move in the field feed on it. Turn again, O God of hosts. Look down from heaven and see. Have regard for this vine, the stock that your right hand planted. They have burned it with fire. They have cut it down. May they perish at the rebuke of your countenance. But let your hand be upon the one at your right hand the one whom you made strong for yourself, then we will return. We will never turn back from you. Give us life and we will call on your name. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. Let your face shine that we may be saved. A reading from Psalm 80, a Psalm of David. And we turn to a Psalm that is more contemporary. It's really recent, just written by my friend Matt and so incredibly powerful. Um, There's a nod in his psalm to the poet Carolyn Kroll as well. And um, let me share it with you now. Thank you, Matt, for this. Where are you, God? I look to the hills and what I behold is a storm. Food bank lineups and grocery store pileups pillage and panic by the ability to make sense of the everyday. Days run without border, time whirls with a little order, and I wonder if you really did set the sun and the moon and the stars on their arc through time and space. Bullet bells break the silence of the night as fright creeps up over the walls we built to keep us sure that violence was for Toronto or Montreal. Not murder scrawled on empty streets between port pic and the big stop station. Another middle-aged white man's motivation to slay a woman who would not submit to his opinions. When will it stop before it starts again? Can we find a way for it to be over before violence ever begins to break another trembling heart? In the chaos, it's hard to face the eyes of the health worker who can't hug their child. People dying without their loved ones in Northwood isolation. God, where is the mother's mercy mild? That bomb for Gilead is stretched thin like gauze. It's no N95 mask or face shield protector that can safely hold us from the pain, the cause of our pain. All this suffering cannot be conditioned by distance. This COVID-19, this multiple mass weight of unspeakable shootings, I cannot condone. I thought you said the original sin was for anyone to ever be alone. I lift mine eyes to the hill and ask, from whence does my deliverance come? Who is equal to this redeeming task? And in your gentle way, as you have always done, you wipe away the tears that well from the place where my fears have begun to run and overwhelm and overreach and shake my barren body loose like a leaf lost to the wind, you restore my soul pointing to the horizon that stretches well beyond what I think or what I can control. You remind me, as you have always done, that lo, the thunderheads loom and lightning seems to cascade and crash and the winds may howl, your love will never fade. Let us remember spirit signs in the chaos of this wild ride because it can't be stormy all the time. 
Let us not forget that every forest begins with a single seed, that every ocean begins with a single drop of rain, that the cold winter soil spell is broken by the little green swords brave enough to push for something more than being frozen. That the night breaks with the first sparrow who dares to sing for the dawn. That for every action of fear, there is an equal and opposite reaction of love that is possible to restore reason, that is powerful, that can gain the traction we need to transform the unknown that confronts us into a future that we can follow. And hallow the love in our hearts for a new season. For the children who come and the children who will know what tomorrow brings. Let us not forget that mustard seed that spreads faster than any virus, virus or violence can feed because it is filled with the love for making shelter that can withstand all kinds of stormy weather, making room for all life and every single creature because this love resists fears helter-skelter with a foundation that will not be rooted up. I look to those storm-clouded hills and you remember me. This root runs beneath them even through eternity, woven with the fire of time and stardust, who was in the beginning and forever and ever shall be and must be both the Alpha and Omega that I trust. Remind me, from the chaos comes love, life, and the simplicity that, with many small things, the future worth living for begins as it always has, with me and you, and in all the love that pours out from the little things we choose to do, together as one. So when I fear, hear fear's siren call laughter, from whence does your help come, I remember. I know now and ever after, let me show you the many things of love my neighbors sow, scattered like mustard seeds across all the divides, in rainbow-colored chalk messages and broken hearts cut and pasted on Facebook status pages, constantly being updated and construction paper hugs taped to the peephole of my window to the world in which we still reside. You and I may be shut in, but we will never give up. I will never let my heart hide. The hope that presses against these COVID contents under pressure because the Christ who came from chaos in the beginning is still standing right here all the time, regardless of the weather, presenting this holy offering of eternal love and grace alike, both unyielding and unrelenting. And then in my heart, a thought, nay, a prayer begins to form. What can withstand such a love? Neither any mountain nor any COVID or killing storm. From whence does my help come? From the one our ancestors called Adonai, Yahweh, the Holy One, yes, some still say the Lord. This is the spirit of the still small silence that chases and nips at the heels of every storm that came and went through the eternity of life since it was born. Because unlike fear from life, love will never resign. And after all, it just can't be stormy all the time. All the time, love is right here. Right here, friends, love is no small thing. And all God's people said, Amen. Powerful words for a time when we fear power, feel powerless. May the words of people writing poems and prayers and songs empower us. May the spirit that has inspired all of that fill us, comfort us. Hear now a prayer from Sarah Jewell. Will you pray with me? Take a deep breath. That was a lot.
Let us pray. A prayer after watching the news. Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are the peacekeepers. Blessed are those who run towards the terror. Blessed are those who sacrifice their lives while doing their job. Blessed are those who weep. Blessed are those who mourn as victims, as families, as strangers united by the news. Blessed are those who are lost. Blessed are those who suffer. Blessed are those who are angry. Blessed are those who look into the face of one who is dying and tell them they are loved. Where do we go with our shock, our confusion, our need to mourn together? What do we do with this grief, this despair, with our sense of helplessness in the aftermath of violence and death? We are down on our knees. Our eyes are squeezed shut, our throats are closed over, yet we pray. We pray for the families of those who have been killed, for the families and co-workers of the RCMP officer, Heidi Stevenson, for the communities who have lost members, for those of us in surrounding communities and in our province and across the nation, as we sit in front of our televisions, as we hold our phones and scroll through the news in disbelief and in pain, for those who know the horror of a mass shooting and are triggered by this event, for those of us trying to find the light in this darkness that is beyond us, yet surrounding us. We think we need answers, but we also need strength and courage. We pray for love. May we love even in the face of rage and destruction. May we love those who are strangers and those who are friends. May we love those who are mourning. May we love those who are angry. May we love. We pray for mercy. These wounds, they are familiar in our hands, in our sides, and in our hearts. We ache with pain. We are forsaken. In our grief, in our anger, in our disbelief, in our suffering, we become one community, one family. Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are those who watch and weep. Blessed are those who pray. Mercy and blessings for those who are lost. Amen. And finally, we will end with a song. This has become our way that we always do things. And the song today is one I don't sing. I've never really sung it before, but I know it because I've heard it. And it's powerful and it's beautiful and it comes from people who understand pain. It's an African-American spiritual. And it came to me to sing it because Matt mentions it in his psalm. Um, the balm in Gilead, the B-A-L-M, the healing salve, that balm. And I'm going to give it a go. So here it goes. There is a balm in Gilead to make the wounded whole. There is a balm in Gilead to heal the sin-sick soul. Sometimes I feel discouraged and think my work's in vain. But then the Holy Spirit revives my soul again. There is a balm in Gilead to make the wounded whole. There is a balm in Gilead to heal the sin-sick 
If you cannot preach like Peter, if you cannot preach like Paul, you tell the love of Jesus and say he died for all. Upon in Gilead to make the wounded whole. There is a bomb in Gilead to save the sin sick soul. There is a bomb. There's a bomb in Gilead and there's a bomb here. There's a bomb in togetherness. There's a healing solve and the love of each other and the way that we've been sharing and coming together. In wrapping ourselves in Nova Scotia tartan, in lighting candles in our windows, in writing songs and poems, in hugs, and in healing tears of grief and pain. May each and every one of you this day feel a balm. Feel the balm of song and prayer and poems. Feel the balm of sunsets and sunrises, of birds singing, children laughing. And let your heart break. It's okay. You will be healed. In time. I love you. I'm praying for you. As I know that you're praying for me. And I appreciate that so much. Thank you my friends. And to all of you watching from my church communities. From Riverview United Church. From Nine Mile River United Church. From Rodden United Church from Woodlawn United Church, and from the community of East Hants, and especially from those watching from my Berwick Camp family. I love you so much. I can't wait to hold you again. Amen.